So I was just uh, up this morning doing like morning routine, quiet time, all this stuff. And I was about to head outside and I thought, yeah, I'm not gonna shoot a video cause I'm probably not gonna get dressed. And then I thought, actually, I think I will shoot a video. A morning pajamas and coffee with the goats video because this is actually real life. <laughs> and I like to show real life. Here you go, Gabriel. Hey, goaties. Good morning. So Janice has gotten herself onto the other side of the fence. I gotta get her back over here. Her mama's hollering at her. And the turkeys are they're going crazy. Hey mama. Y'all ready for some breakfast? So the turkeys must have knocked their they they knocked their electric fence down. I don't know if it's off or if it got grounded on something. But all of the heritage turkeys are out walking through the yard next door. Hey Fred, good morning, mister. Good morning, sir. So the last few months really have been so consumed by the garden and preservation and writing my book that I haven't done just a whole lot of sitting out with my goats. And on one hand, it was really a good thing that I wasn't milking daily, that we didn't end up breeding everybody. Oh, hey, do you need some attention, young sir? What I was saying was that it was, it was a good thing that I wasn't milking every day because I don't think that I actually would have been able to juggle it. But now that the gardening book is written, and now that the demanding part of the year in the garden has passed, I miss my goats. My sweet little goaty girls. Hey, Katie girl. Hey, Katie. Hey, little guy. So this little guy got sick when he was really small. Gabriel, are you trying to have all the attention? Uh, and he never quite recovered. This this is Glen Coco, and he was going to be a sire. We were going to breed him, but a lot of times if they do get sick when they're really little, it, it kind of stunts them. And I don't know exactly like what the deal is with that. I know that when we started raising goats, we kind of like got off on a, a very highly like medically and intervening route. Um, the place where I learned a lot about goats was a group that did a lot of showing and therefore did a lot of like routine medication from when goat kids were really small. And that's how we started. But then we kind of like really realized that we were trying to raise goats solely for milk. We're not trying to show them. And it just sort of like hit me that I didn't want to, to be giving them so much chemical medication all the time. I wanted to wean off of that. Of course, if you have a chemically dependent herd, you can't just cold turkey them off of dewormers and stuff. You'll end up, you'll end up with dead goats if you do that. Like if they're dependent on it, you have to slowly move out of that. And so now we really actually don't do, we don't do chemical dewormers or medications unless they're strictly necessary. We don't do it on a routine, we don't do it on a schedule. And for the most part, that's worked really well. Our goats have stayed really healthy and have been in great shape for like, the last year and a half we haven't had any issues. At the beginning we had a really rough start with goats. Um, occasionally though one will still get wormy, especially when it's a really wet year like this year. And this little guy did. And we did end up deworming him. Um, and he's fine now. He, he doesn't have any issues, but his growth just got really stunted. That could also be like a genetic thing too. Like he might just be a little guy. You know, I don't know exactly what caused it. Hey, what's I'm up? I'm just here to what's pet up? my goat. You're just here to pet your goat? Yeah. <laughs> and you're here to pet your dog, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he has a bug on my face. That's actually a guinea. A what? That's a guinea. Look at all of those turkeys. They're not supposed to be out. It looks like they knocked the electric fence over. That's okay, they'll go back in when it's food time. The problem with having coffee with my goats is that it just makes me want more goats. <laughs> the turkeys just stampeded back over here because they saw their breakfast coming. It's the most popular man in the goat yard. King of the farm. <laughs> the king of the farm. 
farm. Yeah. You hear that, Dad? King of the farm. Who's king of the farm? You. No. We need to get Janice. She's on the other side of the fence. Yeah, she's here. Oh, okay. How'd she get back over here? Tricked her to follow us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go take this back over there to where Ben's at and get a scoop of food for Dr. Ennis. You know what happens when I hang out with the goats? Uh, what? I want more goats. You want to go inside? <laughs> Gabriel is trying to follow Toby next door. <laughs> He's trying to avoid the turkeys. <laughs> They're just going to follow you because I think you have food. I don't have food and stop following me. I don't have food, Clumber. <laughs> Hi, turkey. We're not far from having the turkey house ready. Which is a good thing because the electric fence, even without that pole needing to be fixed, it's not sufficient to keep them in. And I figured this out for sure last night. They were all roosting up here on this fence and I wanted them back over there. So I grabbed the first three and you just grab them by their feet. And you know, just like a chicken, you can hang them upside down and they'll calm down. Well, the last one saw what I was doing and she took off and I kid you not, from this gate she was roosting, she flew up to the top of that tree without stopping. Yeah. I'm like just. <laughs> like, I mean, that's like, how tall is that? Uh, how many dads is that? He went to one of the high branches yeah. and roosted up there. I was like, okay, our run for the turkeys is going to be eight foot tall, and it'll have a covering. So if we ever, if we want to keep them contained, we can. And the reason why is like we've had wild turkeys come into our property and do their little song and dance and steal our hens. And I'm like, we're not doing that again. <laughs> We've actually had a really hard time keeping turkeys stay, to stay here. We've had turkeys multiple times and we got this flock of heritage breed turkeys. We have three different breeds um, from Murray McMurray Hatchery. And we got them this year because we wanted to raise heritage turkeys so we could hatch and have a sustainable stock of turkeys. But uh, in the past, we've had bourbon reds, we've had Narragansett turkeys, we've had black Sp Spanish, and they've just never lasted super long because there's a thousand acres of woods behind us and the wild turkeys come and seduce our turkeys away. <laughs> you know, look at those puffed up turkeys. So here are the heritage turkeys and these are, these are young. They are about, mm, I think they're about 16 weeks. Maybe a little bit more than that. They're so pretty. <laughs> Being a turkey. <laughs> it looks like we have five toms. One, two, and I think seven hens. But we have three different breeds here. We're not trying to like keep them purebred or anything like that. We we just wanted to have a mixed flock of heritage breeds that we could hatch out poults from. And here are the broad-breasted whites, which we've been moving around out here. These guys are about, let's see, we got them on May 14th. So they're about uh, 12 or 13 weeks old. I need to come over and check my pears. Oh, look, there are pears falling on the ground, which means that these are starting to get ripe. Look how loaded it is. Wait, are some of those white? Yeah, I think Can they you are. Try to pick one? There are quite a few on the ground. I want to win it. I have no idea. I don't even know what kind of pears these are. I will we need a ladder. Pear. Can I call it a sweet? What? The family pear tree. You call it the family pear tree? That's cool. Got a lot of pears on it. I really want to get enough pears to make a good size batch of pear habanero jam. I have the habanero peppers and I'm hoping to harvest enough. There's there's quite a few on this tree, not just a ton. The tree's old and it hasn't been pruned properly. It was here when we moved here. Fall? Hey, can you reach one of these branches? It is fall based off of this, but I don't know what's going on here. Well, I think, well, these are new. This has been happening over the last couple of days. I've just been kind of dumbfounded by it. But I've also noticed how many pears are in this tree. Yeah, um, some of them have fallen. I want to get some down and see if they're ready. I just can't reach any. Pull the, can you reach a branch to pull it down? Yeah. Mom, Dad, Dad, can you lift me up so I can get in the tree? What do you think? That's pretty hard. I wonder if it'll ripen. I was reading somebody talking about storage pears and how they're hard when you pick them, but they soften up. I just, I don't know what kind these are. Does anybody know? 
Because honestly, if these are... Well, some are falling to the ground and they're soft. The leaves falling this early is definitely unusual, but our evenings have been like, like our night time lows have been like 62 degrees this week. And the daytime highs have been significantly cooler than uh, usual during this time. It's still hot, it's still 90, like low 90s. But um, interesting observation. I am wondering if we're not gonna have an early freeze this year. Well guys, I think it's time for me to go in and get real close on. <laughs> Here's a little look at my real life mornings. Thank you guys for hanging out with us this morning. You ready? Say it. Be bless you until next time. Be bless you until next time. I kind of like this whole pajama farmer. <laughs> we bless you until next time.